what, of an hour and a half? Is that what's left? Well, the only way I can think of filling an hour and a half is to tell you about the top secret stuff we're doing that nobody else knows about. <laughs> Anybody want that? Show of hands. Okay. Well, a few of you didn't, so there's still coffee out and back if you're not excited about this. But I can tell you, we are so excited. Because at Apple, if you know anything about Apple, you know we live for one thing, and, and that's products, making the coolest, best products. And we live for putting those products out and seeing what people do with them. And when they come back and say, look at what I just did with this amazing piece of hardware software, that's what it's all about. That's when our job is done. So we've been working so hard in the last year on a set of tools that I think are going to just blow people away and further distance ourselves from what anyone else is doing that it's just going to be great. And, and you're going to be so happy that you're our customer if you use our stuff because you're going to see that, that your investment in us was well worth it. So what are we doing? What new things? Well. How many want to see a new version of Final Cut Pro? That's what we're going to see today. Right. I'm also going to show you a completely new version of DVD Studio Pro. Completely new. Right. And last, for those of you not faint of heart, willing to live on the cutting edge of motion graphics, I'll show you a completely new version of Shake as well. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. And we are working to make sure you have just incredible tool set that all works together. I mean, do you remember the days when you have to think, well, do I want to buy a station for another editing station for another editing bay? Or do I need to buy another motion graphics bay or something else for editing my audio? You had to make those trade-offs, and they were hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollar trade-offs. You don't have to make that trade-off anymore. This stuff works on PowerMax, PowerMax that you can buy in a mall <laughs> now. Our, cus our bars make it all work together really well for you with all the other devices you need, but you really can. And better yet, it all works on a portable. You can take this stuff out into the field with you and look at your dailies, look at the news you're working on right there on a power book. That's incredible. When we started this path five years ago, we never dreamed it would deliver the kind of capabilities and power you're going to see today on a portable notebook with a 17-inch screen in the field. And that's what we're doing. So let's get started right away. Let's start on the first product. Final Cut Pro 4. Anyone using Final Cut Pro 3 out there? I hope a few of you. It, it, it has been a great product for us. Final Cut Pro 3 was our best release ever, tremendous success. And Final Cut Pro 3 really started to move us past everybody else. It really started to deliver a product with capabilities you never really thought you'd get in a personal computer-based nonlinear editing product. And, and yet it also had a few things that no one else did, like its real-time effects and its, and its uh, software-based color correction. With Final Cut 4, we are accelerating far beyond what anyone thought was possible in a desktop, affordable, easy-to-use system. This is just going to be far ahead of what anyone imagined. It's, just, it's so exciting. It's a major release. There's over 300 new features. 300. And we're going to go through them one at a time. So I really do need that hour and a half, 300. No, I'm going to pick some of the biggest ones in the product, and hopefully I pick some ones that, ex that excite you all. But there's so much more to explore inside this product. It's incredibly rich. It's, it's the most advanced release we've ever come out with. Well, first up, there's something we call RT Extreme. I know so many of you value what we've started to do with making real-time effects inside Final Cut Pro. And we've taken a look at that architecture in the pipeline for doing real-time work, and we've completely rewritten the engine to do some amazing things. With real-time effects, as you know, you can do a couple things, and it's really limited by what the hardware is capable of today. You can do a few, few streams of video. You can do maybe a, a, a text overlay on that, but you can't overdo it. Don't want to overdo it. Well, with, with Final Cut Pro 4, we listened to our customers and took those limitations off. We had pro customers that said, I know better than you what I want to do. I want to decide whether to add more and more layers of video and let the machine do everything it can, maybe sacrificing some quality, or I want to do less in real time and I want to get pristine, beautiful quality out. And so we took those limiters off. We listened to the customers, and they were so right. 
because it enables some amazing things. First of all, what it means is the software will get faster the more hardware you buy, the faster the hardware is. So we'll promise to keep making faster hardware if you promise to keep buying faster machines to run Final Cut Express, excuse me, Final Cut Pro. And, and you will, and it'll get faster and faster, and you'll be able to do more effects and more and more layers of video. It's also codec independent. Final Cut has really been leading the charge on that. Whether you're working with DV or SD or HD or film, this processor performance will scale and give you more and more performance. And because we took these limitations off, now you have hundreds of real-time effects you can use. You're not limited anymore in, in the real-time effects. And one of the coolest and most productive things for our customers is in real time you can preview out on a broadcast monitor over Firewire exactly what you're doing. Real-time effects previewing out a broadcast monitor. And again, you have the choice. You can work with maximum performance or maximum resolution. And we'll show you what I mean by that in a little bit. So that's a little bit on RT Extreme. If you were to see it in the product, and you will later, and here's an example where I'm now working with four layers of video all being composited, some with uh, color correction being done in real time up there in, in our display. And, and that's never been possible in any system with software real-time effects before. And now we can do that. And as the hardware gets faster and faster, you'll be able to do more and more things, all in software. That's, that's RT Extreme. Next up, another thing a customer's asked for, which is to make Final Cut the most customizable product. It's always been the best at having a productive workflow. And now we give you a lot more power to make it as productive as you want it to be with a completely customizable user interface. You'll have access to over 600 tools and commands in Final Cut. And you can map those with a new keyboard mapping tool to any key combination you want. Okay. And we have these new interface buttons in software that you can drag out commands onto your windows and place instant commands at your fingertips wherever you want them. And of course, you can lay out the windows, but now you can map those window layouts to your keys so that maybe at one moment you're working on the video and you hit a key and it has your perfect layout that you like for video. And now you're going to focus on the audio, so you hit another key and the whole thing remaps to exactly how you all like, like it all laid out for audio, however you want to set up the display. And these are completely importable and exportable. So if you have more than one machine, and we like that, thank you, more than one machine, you can just set these up on all your machine. You have to go and custom set up each one. It will be done just by importing these layouts. In fact, here's one of those new tools you use, a new keyboard mapping tool, where I have on my right all those hundreds of commands you can get access to. In the center, the keyboard itself, and I can drag those commands onto them. I can actually group multiple commands onto one keystroke. And across the top, if you can read the tabs, there are all those key combinations, like command and shift and shift command and elbow, foot, toe, knee command. And they're all up there for you. So you can customize it to your heart's content. So that's customization of the UI. The next one is, is just a technical breakthrough, which is in incredible quality. Now, we've always had a great quality product in Final Cut, much higher quality than, than other products that are available in PC class systems. But now, there is no trade-off at any price with anything you can buy. This is the highest quality production environment for video there is. Because with Final Cut Pro 4, you get the DVC Pro 50 codec that people have been waiting for. You get software bit, software 8 and 10 bit, uncompressed SD and HD. But as a real technical breakthrough, 32 bit floating point processing in Final Cut Pro 4. Never before in a system for under hundreds of thousands of dollars have you been able to get into 32 bit floating point processing. So if anybody it's using a PC-based product, something that runs on a Mac or any other, if there are any other types of PCs out there. Um, the rest are just toys in comparison now. This is real, highest quality, professional output. We have a lot of customers who are going to get into Final Cut just for this one feature alone. Just for one. But they don't have to pay extra for it. It's all built in. OK, now those are some features of Final Cut Pro 4 that are all core features of the product. The next set of features I'm going to show you are things that by their own rights from maybe other companies would have been standalone applications. But we include these full featured products built into the Final Cut Pro workflow. The first one up, 
a little something we call Live Type. Live Type is an amazing titling tool. And it uses some technology, new technology we call Live Fonts. What are Live Fonts? Live Fonts are font sets where every individual character is animated for you. 32-bit animations on every single character, giving you incredible professional quality titling without having to do all the work. We also animate backgrounds and textures and objects. We give you eight gigabytes, right? That's not megabytes, gigabytes of, of media to use inside of, inside of this tool. Now, it comes with templates so you can get started really fast and get going easily, but this is a pro tool, and you can get in there and customize and make your own templates so you can set up your, your titling just the way you want and use it over and over again in your projects for different customers. There are over 150 built-in effects. Again, like everything in Final Cut, this works across all the formats whether you're working in DV or SD or HD. And people have never seen this before today. And this is what this new tool looks like. This is the new, new live type tool. I've animated up on the right. You can see some of the live fonts going, as if you're clicking through the different fonts. Some look like electricity. A lot of fun ones. A couple cool ones coming up. Yeah. Look at this one, growing flowers for your fonts. And here's my favorite, smoke. Who would ever thought having fonts that look like smoke or clouds? Well, now you can get that automatically inside of Final Cut Pro 4. All right, next up. Now, this is a whole application in its own right. Yeah. This is amazing, amazing stuff. And my favorite feature of the application, because someone with my lack of talent, can do incredible things with just a few clicks of the mouse. This is a breakthrough music creation tool. So video editors can now make their own royalty-free soundtracks inside their video products. You don't have to go pay someone for the rights to the music. You don't have to go get a cut, pay someone for a score. You can do those things if you want, but now you have your own music creation tool for video editors inside Final Cut. Of course, it's based on the open markets available today of, of audio loops. Great technology, lots of great audio loops out there, loops and effects. But if you don't want to buy some, don't worry, because we have four gigabytes that we include with the product. And unlike other products, not only do we match tempo, but key as well. Because if you've ever worked with audio loops, you know they're recorded in different tempos and at different keys. And we have some really unique technology in here to automatically, in real time, match the tempo and key. So if you use a great guitar track for some great guitarist, and someone else did a great bass track, it doesn't matter that they were recorded in different tempos and keys. We match them automatically for you. And you can arrange this and mix this all in real time as you're previewing your, your video content. You get just what you want. And it integrates beautifully with Final Cut. So we have a new feature in Final Cut Pro called a score marker. You can actually make score markers that get brought into soundtrack so that you can align your music for that perfect moment in the video when you want the cymbal crash to happen when the boat's breaking through the wave. And it just takes a second to do that now. It's incredibly easy. So again, no one's seen this before, so I'm really happy to show you a screenshot of the brand new soundtrack. Yeah. Up on the top left, you see your video. Along the left-hand side, you see some of the instruments you've brought out, some of the sound loops you've picked for this project. And across the majority of the display is the timeline, the soundtrack music timeline, where you can control and edit and mix in real time the exact music track you want. So that's, so that's soundtrack a killer new complete application feature built inside of Final Cut Pro 4. One more application feature, something we call compressor. So many of our customers have to send out their output into other formats. Maybe they're working in DV and they also want to post something in the web in MPEG-4 or whatever format they want. Wouldn't it be great if within Final Cut you could actually create and batch and produce the outputs in all different formats with a single click of the button? Well, that's what this does for you. It's a full-feature transcoder built into Final Cut Pro. It allows you to set things exactly as you want and create batch processes and set off multiple, multiple projects through the compressor. It supports all the QuickTime codecs. We have presets and filters that you can apply built in. But of course, again, it's a pro tool, and you can customize this to your heart's content. It takes advantage of a lot of QuickTime features, like watermarking. And of course, typical to Final Cut, you get a real-time preview so you can see what you're doing before you do it. 
another entirely new application component, and here's what it looks like. So complete professional transcoding tool where you can set up your source material, your output formats, multiple formats simultaneously. I can set up my batch processes, tweak them to my heart's content, see a preview up on screen of not only the compression settings, but the filters I'm applying. You have one simple way to make all this happen. And one of the great things about it is with most tools, and a lot of great tools out there, you have to output from an application like Final Cut into a format and then import it, and you get a generational, generational loss. Well, we work right off of the source material from within Final Cut, so there's no loss of quality at all. So a great, productive tool. Now, those are a bunch of things we're doing in Final Cut Pro 4 to make it a better product for you, make it more feature-rich for you. But there's a whole other class of things we're doing, too, that's going to make your life a lot better. And that's making it more extensible for the whole world of products that work with Final Cut. We've done some amazing things to make this the most open product in the marketplace. First of all, there's a new format. We call it the XML interchange format. This is an open specification. If some of you are aware of a format called AAF, this is a superset of that. And there's plugins available that are being announced from others on the Lettered Exchange with AAF, but this is even more than that. This is an open format, and I've listed some of the elements of your project files that you can now have exchanged between other applications, because that would make your life so much easier. Things like the bins and the clips and the transitions and the filters and the effects and the version control, all that data and more gets shared with this open file format specification. So just like we are with Mac OS X, just like, are, are we, are, like we are with QuickTime, Apple more than anyone is trying to drive open standards, open formats, because in the end, that's best for the customer to be able to make sure their resources can move around their workflow. We'll have an API for importing and exporting and an SDK for developers to get started really fast, creating components that work with the XML interchange format. That's on the software side. On the hardware side, we've done some fun things to open things up, too. We've got a new FireWire-based I.O. framework. Now, a lot of you know what, what a mess it is working with the connections and the cabling between all your devices and the cards required and the drivers and, and what, what that's been like over the last 10, 15 years. Well, what if you could take one thin little cable and plug it between your computer and all your devices. You get uncompressed audio and uncompressed video and device control over that one cable. Well, that's what this does and delivers on. And it's an open API for doing that. Not only is it great for our desktops, so we have all these devices and, and, and decks and, and cameras to connect to, this is ideal for portables. You don't want card slots in a portable. You just want to connect over FireWire to all the same professional equipment without having to lose connectivity because you're just working on a portable. So this framework does that. And there is so much more that we don't have time to cover. I threw a few of these up here because I know a lot of you out there can quickly read this and you'll instantly get the value of some of these things to your workflow. Incredible things in there, like multi-track audio mixing, now built in to Final Cut Pro 4 and more things. Yeah. <laughs> one, feature, one feature I wanted to call out special attention to if you're ever aware of, if you do work with, at film quality, and you need Cinema Tools, Cinema Tools is now included in Final Cut. It's not a $1,000 add-on. Yes. So that's a glimpse of a few of the, a few of the 300 new features in, in Final Cut Pro 4. Real-time extreme, a customizable new UI, incredible high quality, titling application, soundtrack application, transcoding tools, open formats and frameworks, and cinema tools built in. And it sounds almost too good to be true, doesn't it? April Fools. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. We want to prove it to you. So I'd like to ask Paul Sacconi, Final Cut Pro Product Marketing Manager up here, to give you your first glimpse of Final Cut Pro 4. Paul? Thanks, Phil. Thank you. So this is very exciting for us. This is an incredibly huge release, over 300 new features, enhancement tools, some industry firsts, and I'm really happy that I get to show it to you first. <laughs> so uh, let's jump right in. I'm going to show you RT Extreme. We'll just start with that. The first thing I'm going to do with RT Extreme is I'm going to just 
play for you an example of what we typically expect from a dual stream real time effects system that most professional nonlinear editors are used to working with. So you see I've got a couple of streams of video, I've got, two, I've got a stream of text there, everything's animating and it's all in real time. But RT Extreme is this amazing, powerful new real time engine that scales with processor performance and we've taken the limiters off allowing editors to do anything they want with the system. So for example, if I want to, I can go in and I can just drop a whole stack of clips on here and instantly in real time I've got four streams of video with motion and color correction and text all going at once. This is all happening in software of course. So we haven't stopped there. You know, you can get NTSC or PAL output as well with this. So now with real time effects we can do NTSC and PAL output. Let me just play you an example of what that would look like. But this time I'm going to do it with full resolution, full quality DV output, software based real time effects. So we've got again a couple of clips with the cross dissolve. We've got our lower third, our translucent graphic, and a title here. All full resolution DV out of Firewire in software, no hardware. So that's all great. There's a lot of power here. And you know, as an editor, I like to be able to just have the control to say, you know, I want to work with multiple streams, as many effects as I can. We've got nearly 200 filters, effects, and transitions inside Final Cut Pro 4 that are now real time. So instead of, instead of focusing, on, focusing on things like, you know, fuzzy heart wipes and cheesy 3D flips and dissolves and stuff like that, which you can get on any nonlinear editor, we listened to our customers and we decided to do things that were relevant to their workflows. So for example, I have this clip here with the green screen. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to apply our new real time chroma key to that effect, to that clip. Instantly, you can see I've got my real time chroma key. This I can play it back. But there's more. You know, I can just keep stacking things up here. I'm going to keep adding things. I'm going to just throw on my color bar. I'm going to throw on my text. And the power here is that I have instant creativity. I can try new things. I can move around. I can, I can add effects. I can add filters. I can just double click on this. I can change the color. It's all about the creative workflow. It's about being empowered to just work the way you want to without having to stop and wait and render or do anything like that. This product is amazing. So instantly I've changed this color. I'm doing all of this in real time and I could have it out with NTSC as well. Let me switch to the uh, beginning of this project. Now I've just got a standard Final Cut Pro title here composited against the background. Of course that's real time as well. But maybe I want to do something a little more dynamic. So I'm going to jump into live type to show you how we use that application. This is the live type interface and you can see I've got my video clip here at the top left. I've got an inspector here in the middle and then a media browser on the right with my timeline on the bottom. So we'll just click through some of these live fonts. Live type is amazing in that it lets you create these high quality animated titles with ease and there's this ease. There's this huge library of animated textures and objects and fonts that are included with it. I'm just going to click through a couple more of these live fonts that Phil showed you earlier. I mean look at this ribbon. They're just so cool. I mean you can you sit here in days looking at this stuff. There's, there's nine gigabytes of content for you to go through, so um, it'll take you a while to get through all of it. But look at this, the scripting. It's all beautiful. And these are the kinds of things that would take you hours, if not days, in a motion graphics application to put together. But any video editor, regardless of skill level, can come into live type and can create these things with ease. Let me show you how I would use, um, well, let me show you some of these textures first. I'll just click through a couple of these textures very quickly. We've got liquids, we've got metals, all kinds of great things that you can use. Some objects here, we've got great digital objects. Little matrixy effects going on here, um, binary signals. And then, of course, there are the effects. So, whether I'm using a live font or a system font or a background or an object, I can apply any of over 150 preset effects to these objects. So, you can see here I've got a whole list. I've got um, several different categories. Let me just click through a couple of these. You can get an instant preview at the top. Some of them are kind of funny. Um, we'll go through some of the fades spin and fade, so I can apply these to any text object or, or any object in my timeline. Go here, I've got some zooms, we've got your scrolls, crawls, we've got everything in here. Just double click on this element and it adds it to my timeline and then I just put it into place and I've instantly created a title. Now of course there's tons of presets, right, and you can use our preset effects or you can customize them or build your own from scratch. You can even make your own live fonts. There's an included font maker utility so anybody can build an animated font. You're all going to go out and do that, right? Okay. Okay. So let's look at some of the templates. If you don't want to start with the discrete elements, you can start with some pre-built templates that we're including with the package. We've got lower thirds. We've got promos. Let me click on a couple of these here. 
So these are just completed projects that you can use as a starting point for your own effects and for your own titles. So I'm going to load this project up here. This is our blocks project. And all I have to do now is go in and customize the text. Maybe I want to change the font or color of something and then export it to Final Cut Pro. It's simple, it's easy, and in a couple of minutes you can get yourself a really high quality title that's appropriate for standard, high def, or DV. Let me switch to another sequence and show you what that looks like finished. So here's just the title. I've composited it over some moving video there and it took no time at all. Now the one thing my project is missing though is some music. So who wants to see soundtrack? And it, yeah? Okay. All right. So this is a lot of fun. This is soundtrack. And soundtrack includes a vast library of musical loops. I think there's something like four gigabytes of loops. So literally thousands and thousands of, of musical loops that you can play with. I've got my video loaded here. And there's a powerful search tool on the left that helps me, that helps me find loops. I can just start playing my video. And then in real time, I can start just clicking on instruments and previewing them. A little Latin beat going. I can just keep playing with this until I find the, the groove or the feel that I want. There's some drums, I like those, so I'm going to add them. And because these are musical loops, I can make them as long or as short as I want. So I'm just going to put that underneath my video project. And let's go grab a synth. I'll just click through a couple of these here. Let's find one. OK, I think I like that one, so I'm going to add that one. Just drag that out. That's a little loud, so what I'm going to do is in real time, I'm going to mix that down. I just want that to be some background music. And now I'm going to go for maybe something a little more U2-ish, so I'm going to search for um, some guitars. And I'm going to refine my search. I can actually refine my search parameters here. I type in strum. Oops, excuse me. Let me just stop playback. So I go into my guitars here. I type in strum and it returns me a bunch of different guitar sounds. So let's just listen to a couple of those again. I'm going to be auditioning those. I like this one. Now the really great thing about soundtrack is you don't need to know anything about music to use this product. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> See, even I can make something. <laughs> so, so this is great. This is really empowering. You can make your own custom soundtracks for your, um, for your video projects. But look at what it did here. All of these tempos are different for all of these different loops. And all of the key signatures are different, the musical keys. So in real time, soundtrack is matching tempos and adjusting the keys. So all of these elements, which were never supposed to sound good together, mix together and sound like they should belong. Let's add a couple more uh, pieces to this. And... I'll go back to my synths, maybe find another synth. Uh, use that one. Bring that down just a little bit. We'll find a bass. Now I've got all of my instruments here, so I've essentially got a composition. But now I'm going to show you another, um, another bit of real-time power here. So in real time, without changing pitch, I can stretch the tempo. So uh, one, last, one last thing to talk about here in Soundtrack. Final Cut Pro 4 has new scoring markers. And these scoring markers let us line up important video edits with things in our music composition. And I've got two scoring markers here. And really, arranging your musical composition is very simple. Video editors, this is something any video editor can do, because video editors are really good at moving around pieces of elements on a timeline and mixing and matching components. I'm going to use my scoring markers as sync points for my drum kit and my bass, so I'll put them on the second marker there, and then I'll put this synth in on the first marker, and instantly I've got my composition. So, 
So between soundtrack and live type, you've got these incredible new creative tools that let any video editor do amazing things with their projects. The next step is to take my soundtrack file and bring it back into Final Cut Pro. I can do that as either a stereo mixdown or as individual tracks, discrete, um, as discrete sound files. Let me switch back into Final Cut Pro. And I've done some customizing now of my user interface here. I've got some buttons on, the, on here. And I'm just going to click on this button on my interface, and now I can go to my audio mixing layout. You know, I have to show you this. This is cool. <laughs> so these buttons, you can color them. You can reorganize them. You can move them around. You can add spacers. You can create functional groups. You can drag them to any window that you want. So I can put this one you know, up here if I wanted it to go there. It's just, it's great. Um, so let me keep going with the audio here before uh, Phil yanks me off the stage. And um, the, the audio architecture in, Ma in Final Cut Pro is based now on Mac OS X's core audio architecture. And this allows us to do some really um, industry-leading things with, with audio in our video editing application. For example, 24 channels of discrete audio output now from Final Cut Pro. <laughs> In addition to the multi-channel out audio output, we also now um, are compatible with many Mac OS X audio units effects plugins. And this new audio architecture gives us the ability to adjust parameters, like if I throw an EQ or a reverb on something. I can adjust parameters in real time while it's playing back. So I can instantly hear how all those changes are going to affect my composition. But what I'm going to show you right now is the multi-track audio mixer. And some of you may have noticed it hiding up here on the top right of the screen. And the multi-track audio mixer supports a whopping 99 tracks of audio. I don't know of any other nonlinear editing package out there that supports this many audio tracks. Let me show you how easy it is to go in and record some keyframes. So I'm going to adjust the levels of my audio and play that and record those in real time. So I'm going to hit play. I want this product that I'm making to be the best thing there is. And very quickly, you can see that Final Cut Pro has added keyframes for me. So I wish I had more time, because there are about 250 other features that I'd love to show you. Um, but you'll have to stop by the booth. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy the show. Phil. Thanks, Paul. It is truly a remarkable piece of software and by far the greatest release of Final Cut we've ever, ever worked on. And, and I know we have a few members of the, of the engineering team here and I want to thank them for their amazing work accelerating this product. Thank you. So if I'm you, I'm probably sitting in my seat saying, when can I get my hands on this puppy? Yeah. Yeah, well, not much longer. Available in June. Uh, available in June. <laughs> the new version of Final Cut Pro 4 for $9.99. That's right. That includes everything we've talked about, all that media, cinema tools, all those capabilities. We don't, we don't want to be in an environment where we charge you more for that stuff. We want you to do everything you can with the software. It's just truly incredible. So that's, that's Final Cut Pro 4. Before we go on to the next product, you want to mention something else that's really important to us, and that's how we work with others, how we play nice with others, to make you, uh, your life easier so you can work with all these great products. And so there's really an, there's an ecosystem growing up around Final Cut Pro. It's becoming a whole environment to itself working with so many other great products in your workflow and we're working with a lot of really wonderful companies to make sure these products work together beautifully. And I just want to point out two of them very quickly to you that you'll be able to check out here at NAB as they address some, some really burning needs of some of our customers. Uh, one is uh, Panasonic has been working with us very closely to deliver a real end-to-end -end solution on DVC Pro 50. And so now with the capabilities of Final Cut Pro 4 and its built-in DVC Pro 50 codec and its ability over a FireWire I.O. framework to work directly with DVC Pro 50 hardware, decks and cameras from Panasonic, now all that we've heard about for so long about this incredible format that's both portable and high-quality compositing is now becoming available to us. And this is really going to change 
change a lot of things for people as they work out there with this DV format of pro production quality. So the pieces have finally come together on this, on this great thing. One other thing for to take a look at uh, while you're here at NAB, another great product that works with the new Final Cut Pro, it's from AJA Video Systems. And, and I think you all know them quite well from, from their products to date. Uh, but they have a brand new product to share at the show that we've worked together on. And it's a very cool I.O. box. Yeah. So, ooh, it's cool. Uh, very cool. Now, if you look closely, just to the center of it, you see this little FireWire connector. It connects directly to your Mac over FireWire. And that's the only cable you need to hook this box to your Mac. That's it. And this gives you a 10-bit uncompressed solution with all ports active all the time. This is unheard of. Remarkable product. Yeah. So make sure you check that out. So I think those are important things to add to the story of what's happening with Final Cut Pro 4. There's so many things going around it, both with Apple and some of the other partners that you count on. All right. Let's move on to the next product, DVD Studio Pro 2. Entirely new version. And when I say new, I mean new. I mean, people in marketing talk about new, new, improved, better, cooler, faster, whiter. No, this is entirely new. We've rewritten the product completely in Cocoa for Mac OS X. Now, you know there's a lot of other people following in our footsteps, coming into the DVD authoring market, and you know who they are, right? And these companies set their aim on the market leader, and that was DVD Studio Pro 1.5. And it was a good thing to set their aim on because it's a great product. But you know what? While they were aiming, we were moving. They had no idea what was coming out here at the show, the new things we were going to announce, and it's completely changing the landscape. And they're all going to miss the target. We have an entirely new product that's going to redefine professional DVD authoring again. So what could make it so great and new? An entirely new UI, completely new UI for authoring DVDs. And in typical Apple fashion, we made it both simple and approachable and powerful. I mean, it starts out so easy, it's as easy to start in as iDVD. So customers who are using Final Cut Pro, once they've never made a DVD before, are going to find this so easy to step into now. In just minutes, create professional DVDs. But the more important thing is it is a Pro tool. It is not iDVD. The user interface expands with some very, very powerful tools to give you more power than you ever had before. We have a new timeline that we'll talk about in a second, an outline view, a browser view, track control, powerful templates. It is a professional workflow environment. So here's how it starts. It starts out really easy. For anyone who used DVD Studio Pro 1.5, you know what I'm talking about. This is entirely new. Here's my DVD menu authoring environment. There are my templates on the right. Pretty easy. Drag a template out, get working right away. But as you get to know the product better and expand it, it becomes a lot more powerful. There's a lot more tools at your fingertips, tools that no DVD authoring environment has had before. So a very scalable UI, depending on how you want to work and how fast you want to get a product out. We also now include templates. You saw the templates there on the right. These are not mom's templates. Right? <laughs> These are professional templates created by professionals who work on DVD projects for Hollywood. And you can get in there and see these professional design templates. We'll show you some. They give you control not only of the look, but of templates for the buttons, for the text, for the layouts, and alpha channel drop zones. So you can drag video into windows and dynamically composite them with alpha channels. And completely customizable. So you make your templates for your projects, edit with ours or start your own, use them for your own workflow, sell them to customers, however you want to work with these templates. Very, very powerful. Here's a simple view of that template window. But the most innovative new feature in DVD Studio Pro 2 is the menu editor. Because that's what it's all about, right? Building the menus for your DVD. Now, we've, we had the most productive work environment with Final Cut. As you know, you can drag content over and do your three points edits, and you can do them with drop areas with menus that pop up and tell you what to do. Well, what if in, in DVD Studio, we made it so that it was smart enough to look at the content you grabbed, look at where you want to drag it, and dynamically present to you all the choices of the things you might want to do and save you dozens if not hundreds of steps and do it all for you. That would be really powerful and that's what this new menu editor does. The new menu editor is context sensitive. It looks at what you've grabbed, it looks where you want to drop it and pops up choices for you of what you might want to do. 
We also took something from Keynote, the Apple's presentation software, a really innovative feature called alignment guides. So as you move things around on the display, these bright yellow alignment guides show you when they're centered, when they're aligned with other objects, and in a snap, you can get things precision aligned just where you want it. And unlike other products that make you go outside to something else to edit and composite your text, and outside to go out and paint and composite your buttons, you now do that in one dynamic live compositing environment inside DVD Studio. Inside DVD Studio Pro, you edit your text, change your styles, and it all composites it in real time. You can move buttons around and make them any size, place them anywhere you want, and dynamically, your buttons are all composited with the live video sources you're working with. Incredible flexibility, and of course, like all of Apple's products, you get a full motion preview of the work you're doing. It's very, very powerful. Here's an example. Here's a screen inside DVD Studio Pro, and we've grabbed a QuickTime movie, and we've started to drop it. We brought, brought it right on top of the, the main screen, and you see the, that orange and, and blue pop-up window. That's the menu editor giving you choices. What would you like to do? Do you want to use that movie as the background and replace the background? Do you want to create a button and a track and have it automatically link and lay that out for you? It takes care of it all for you in just a second. A really powerful new feature. You also saw on that user interface the new timeline that's now part of DVD Studio Pro 2. Within one timeline, you get at all the power of the DVD spec. Other products don't give you access to the whole spec. A few products make you pay extra for getting access to the whole spec. I don't get it. Don't get it. You don't get that with Apple's products. We give you complete access to the full spec. Within a track, you get eight video angles, eight audio streams, 32 subtitles, all manageable right there yourself in the timeline. You control the chapter markers as well. They come in from Final Cut and actually control them right there in, in DVD Studio Pro. And of course, precise trimming of the clips too. So here's a view of the brand new timeline. Here you see one track on your DVD that would have, for example, three video angles, three different audio tracks, maybe a voiceover, maybe another language and a text track as well, all controlled by you in one productive environment that's obviously very intuitive to anyone who's come from Final Cut Pro and worked in a timeline. And we talked about the compressor in Final Cut. It makes obvious sense. The compressor is really valuable inside DVD Studio Pro as well. In the end, you assemble all this media and you've got to compress it and go through batch processes and get fine control of different codecs. Well, the compressor also comes included and built in with DVD Studio Pro 2. Now, in addition to all the features we talked about before with the compressor, I wanted to highlight this uh, for you, which is, of course, DVDs are all about MPEG-2. And we have a brand new MPEG-2 codec you can use within DVD Studio Pro and also with the compressor. And it is the highest quality MPEG-2 codec in the business. Our customers now will have the most beautiful, pristine looking DVDs. So that's some of the new features in DVD Studio Pro 2, a great new user interface, powerful templates, an innovative new menu editor, a brand new timeline to allow you to organize this in a snap and be very comfortable to Final Cut users, a built-in compressor. And to give you a glimpse of this, I'd like to bring Brian Schmidt up here. Now I'm going to practically drag Brian up here because this has never been seen before and it's, you know, you know what it's like showing beta software. So pray to the demo gods and good luck, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Actually, you probably couldn't keep me off stage. Um, yeah. I'm really dying to show this product. It's going to be fantastic. Um, basically, I want to show you the new templates, the menu editor, and the timeline. But most importantly, I want to show you how easy it's going to be for any Final Cut Pro user to just jump into DVD Author and start producing professional titles. So what I have here is my menu editor. I also have uh, the template window with some other content options. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag in one of my templates and drop it into the menu editor. And so this template comes in. And I have three buttons already existing. Let's go ahead and just take a look at it with the motion preview. You can see it's uh, got a full motion menu background with audio and video. Uh, and I have buttons sitting on top of it. And uh, audio done with soundtrack, of course. So I stop that preview. And uh, one of the limitations of the previous version of DV Studio Pro was if you had a menu like this, you usually had to go back to the program that you created it in to make any changes. So what I'm going to do now with DVD Studio Pro 2.0 is just select this button in the text, and I need to make a change to the button, so I'm just going to do it inside of DVD Studio Pro. So now I have completely editable text in the window. And what's more, because I made the change inside of DVD Studio Pro, it's now been recomposited on top of my motion menu background. 
Is that cool? Anybody like that? Okay. <laughs> and what's more is I can go to my styles panel, and basically my templates are just conglomerations of all these different types of styles. So I have buttons, I have text, I have drop zones, and just layouts that all control how a template works and behaves. So when I have a template, I can also break it down into these various options and just use them separately as well. So if I just drag down the play button and drop it on here, I have added another button. And now I can reposition this on screen, and you can see the keynote style dynamic alignment guides coming up to help me make my design decisions. And again, just clicking the preview button, full motion preview. I don't have to go back to other applications. I'm doing it all on the same app. I've got a lot of artistic control at this point. I can really explore where I want to go with this project. Now that I have my menu set up, I want to start adding some content to it. So I'm going to go over here to my palette again, and I'm going to go to the Stills tab. If you notice, this is looking at iPhoto's libraries. So it's looking at all my photo albums. Same is true for I, the, uh, the Audio tab. It looks at my iTunes folder and gives me my playlists and my MP3s and everything I want from there. Um, so to create a slideshow, all I need to do is just drag these, grab these four slides, and if I drag them to the menu, you'll notice that I get this pop-up, and it says create button and slideshow, create button, create submenus. So I could create four submenus with these if I wanted to. But then when I drag it over the Writer Biographies button, it gives me another set of options because it's a smart program. It does all the thinking for me. So now I can just say create slideshow. And now in one step, I've created a slideshow with four slides in the background and linked that button to it. Now I want to add a video to this. So I have a QuickTime movie here. This is pretty interesting because before you had to create MPEG-2s, import those into the program, and use the MPEG-2s and AIFF or AC3. Now I have a QuickTime movie in here, and I'm just going to simply drag this down onto the button and create a track. And so now DVD Studio Pro has created a track, put the QuickTime movie in it with the audio, of course, link this button to it, and it's already started background encoding it with 2-pass BBR for the MPEG-2 encoder. Now, this isn't all that DVD Studio Pro is cracked up to be. For instance, um, a lot of DVD authors may actually um, build a lot of Photoshop documents, because you can also do Photoshop layered uh, menus in here. Um, you can pull in stuff from Shake or Final Cut or whatever you want. Um, but they'll, they'll want to prepare their documents and have them on their folder and then import those folders into their authoring program and start assembling things. So what I'm going to do is just slide over here and pull out a little bit of the UI. And so now, I've just exposed my asset bin. And the asset bin gives you full information about all your assets. Uh, but right now, it's listing out what I have in there just from dragging in the template, so I can change those items if I'd like. But I can also click Import and choose a folder of assets. And so we've added the ability to have folders in here, so I can open and close this. And I can have as many folders as I want in there and keep my assets all organized. And I'm going to take this MPEG-2 that I've encoded with Compressor and drag it to my play button to create another track. And so just creating tracks is just so brain dead simple right now, it's going to be easy for anyone to do it. But a lot of DVDs actually uh, have you know, more features, like uh, maybe audio tracks, additional video angles, titling, and whatnot. So with DVD Studio Pro, we added a timeline because it's really the best way to handle that type of stuff. And so as you can see, I have a timeline. It looks very much like Final Cut Pros, but it's been slightly adapted for DVD authoring. All the shortcut keys, everything's going to be similar. And I can also just click on this and switch to my second track. And you can see how my chapter markers came in directly from Final Cut, complete with their names and everything. So I don't have to re worry about doing that. I can drag chapter markers around on the timeline, rename them if I like, all kinds of control. So I want to add this French audio track. So to do that, I'm just going to drag the French audio track down to the timeline here and place it in here and make sure it gets synced up. And so now I have two audio tracks. Um, of course, I can add up to eight video angles here, 32 subtitles, all that good stuff. And now I want to reuse this piece of thing, this, this track I just created with the two audio tracks in the video. So I'm going to expose a little bit more of the UI. And so now I have the outline view showing me the comprehensive list of everything in my project. So I've got a, a menu in here, and I've got a couple tracks and a slideshow and, and things like that. And I can reuse these elements now that I've created those elements. I can then take this track down 
and drop it on the chapter index button. And then this time, we're going to choose create chapter index. And DVD Studio Pro looks at my templates and says, OK, these are the ones you can use for a template for the chapter index. I'll choose this one and hit OK. And now, in the background, DVD Studio Pro is my best friend because it's created another menu with chapter marker buttons that relate to my chapters down here and rename them for me. Let's take a look. All I have to do is double click, and the navigation works, takes me to the new menu, shows me the new buttons with the new names from the chapter markers. Those weren't named like that in the template when I built the chapter index. It did that automatically. And uh, all I need to do is click the back button here, and it takes me back to the main menu because the template's smart, and it knows to go back to the main menu when I have a button named a certain way. So let's just take a look at this in the preview. Everything looks good. I have my uh, DVD all built up. And now I want to take a look at the links and check it out in the simulator. And here we go. We got the uh, DVD going, all new simulator. Thank you. We've been innovating in mountain bike technology since the mid-1990s. And that experience shows an advanced design. So we really do believe this is going to really revolutionize, redefine DVD authoring, make DVD authoring more accessible to any Final Cut Pro user who wants to do any type of DVD project. And with that, turn it back to Phil. Thank you, Brian. That is the all-new DVD Studio Pro 2, a completely new application. I think just a tremendous number of breakthroughs uh, to make professional DVD authoring uh, just leap ahead of anything we've known to date. And again, there's a, there's a few people here in the audience who have worked so long and hard on this, so if you could please help me thank them for their work. I don't want to over-encourage them because they have a little bit more work to do. Uh, the product will be available in August, so they'll be back as fast as they can from here, back to Cupertino, working extremely hard on this. It'll be available this August for $499. Yes. And more importantly to all of you who use DVD Studio Pro today, the upgrade is just $199. So uh, just breakthrough pricing on a breakthrough product. And, and I think we're going to maintain dramatic leadership and make, keep the Mac the number one platform for authoring DVDs, as it should be. Yes. That's DVD Studio Pro 2. And third and, and last, I'd like to, to show you a, a brand new version of a remarkable product, Shake, with version Shake, the next version being Shake 3. And for those who don't know a lot about Shake, Shake is a remarkable motion graphics product. It's used by some amazing customers of ours who have, for the last six years running, won the Oscar for the best visual effects using Shake as part of their production workflow. So just remarkable work like this. The Lord of the Rings, as you see, uh, being used inside of Shake. If you haven't seen Shake, this is what the user interface looks like. We have our content in the top left. In the uh, bottom left half of the screen, you see access to the hundreds of professional effects tools we have in InShake. And on the right, we have a process tree where you combine all those different elements to really do the magic of Hollywood and, and make these incredible scenes come to life. So in Shake, we're going to hit just briefly on, on some of the major new features in Shake 3. First of all, for the customers who work so hard on these feature film effects, we've worked to deliver some amazing new capabilities to make them more productive. Uh, for example, just to pick on one of the motion tracking, we're delivering motion tracking. So when our customers now rotoscope items and have to uh, work through time, of course, on their effect, you want to be able to track the motion of an object with that rotoscope and save tons of tedious work having to actually rotoscope each individual frame. Now that's automatically handled. Or if you're working with CG and you've got film and it's kind of obvious the difference, we can now simulate film grains on the graphics so it fits more seamlessly within your film product. So just amazingly powerful new features in the tool. Here's a screenshot from Shake 3. Here you see a scene where in The Lord of the Rings, Frodo is working his way with Sam across a marsh. And for those of us who all know actually sometimes how things look behind the scenes, you actually see, I don't remember the truck being in The Lord of the Rings. No, it's, it's, it's through the magic of these tools that they're able to 
to uh, rotoscope these objects and change the, the backgrounds. And, and now with this red line you see there, that's the motion tracking, we can save time for our customers so they use Shake to track Frodo through the scene, not have to rotoscope each and every frame if they don't want to. So very powerful tools. We're also starting to see Shake appear into some other workflows as well. One example being the broadcast market, we're starting to see customers use high-end tools like Shake to create their effects in their compositing work. And there are some new features there as well. Uh, the most important one to, to call out is something entirely new in this category with this film quality product to be able to do real-time NTSC output of the work you're doing. So just incredible film quality effects, real-time on the computer, and now real-time output to the broadcast monitor. And also powerful audio playback and analysis tools. Here's a shot of that. Because you're sitting there working in audio and you want to synchronize a sound effect with the visual effect you're creating. And now you have beautiful tools to do just that. But probably the coolest feature, it's only for me, is something we're, we're able to bring to the Mac customer base. Something we call QMaster. That's entirely new in Shake 3. As you may know, with a product like Shake, you have two parts to it. You have the, the GUI, your front end part, where you're working on the client, doing all your, your animation and graphics work. You have a back end part or a renderer sitting on a server where you go to to send your jobs to speed up the process rather than your local machine. You have so much you want to render. In the past, you had both of those, and you would set up the IP addresses and the information about the different servers and go through a complicated Unix process to set this stuff up. Well, now with Shake 3 on Mac OS X machines, we have a new product called QMaster that manages the distributed networking process for you very easily. It has a simple user experience, and it uses this magical little technology we've come out with Apple at Apple called Rendezvous. Rendezvous is an open source specification for IP networking, where we do dynamic discovery of devices on a network. So you don't have to find the IP addresses. You don't have to find the names and properties of these machines. They actually broadcast it to the Shake Q Master, and it tells you what's out there and available for you to use. What's also cool is not only does the renderer run on servers like Linux servers as well as our Mac OS X XServe uh, products, but it also runs on Mac desktops. So a lot of our customers have Power Macs in their environment. What if, during peak workloads, you want to send off some of your jobs to use the idle CPU time on those Macs sitting around the office? Well, now you can do that. And we'll dynamically mix both servers and desktops to give you the maximum compute power for rendering your jobs. It also load balances across those to try to get the maximum performance for you. And it's fault tolerant. What if you're in the middle of a big rendering job and someone goes home and turns off their Power Mac? We know it wouldn't crash, because Mac OS X doesn't crash, but, but, but it certainly uh, could be turned off. And don't have to worry about that, because QMaster will load balance and move that, that frame across to something else and get your work done on time. So a very, very powerful tool that supports the servers that are out there, but uses self-discovery with Rendezvous on the Mac client side. So that's a few of the new features in Shake 3, some new effects features, some new broadcast support, like the monitor out in QMaster. And to show you a glimpse of this incredibly powerful tool, I'd like to bring Dion Scopatulo out, Shake Product Marketing Manager, to demo Shake 3. All right, we're going um, to we're going to first go over the Shake user interface, just to give you an idea of what's on screen and what you're looking at. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner here, we have the preview window. The preview window is completely resolution independent. You can load in uh, SD footage, HD footage, 2K images, 4K images, and you can mix them all in the same project. And they can be of different bit depths, too, for color. So you can mix that all on the preview monitor and, and view your composite as you work. Down in the lower left-hand corner is a tab-based interface where you get all the really production-proven tools in Shake, the bundled Primat and C, uh, CFC Keylight Keyer, the color correctors, uh, the blurs, things like that. Down in the lower right-hand corner, you have all the tweaking tools. So once you add those effects to your, sh to your shots, you can start tweaking them and animating down there. And really up in the upper right-hand corner is the heart of the system. This is the nonlinear process tree. So unlike a timeline or layer-based view, this is a schematic view of how your process comes together. And it flows from the top down. So if we're just looking at the top of this tree, you have all your different source material, and it flows into different effects like resizes and keyers and things like that. And it finally flows down to the bottom where you have your output. And so when we want to view something, uh, we can view it on the screen. And now new in Shake 3, the first feature I want to talk to you about is broadcast monitor support. 
So new in Shake 3, using third-party cards from AJA Digital, or Digital Voodoo, we can actually play back the clip. And here we're going to play back a scene, uh, one shot from X-Men 2. OK. Play this back again. OK. Let's step through that so I can give you an idea of what's happening here. So right now we have uh, Wolverine. That's the good guy. He jumps around and he transforms into Mystique. She's the bad one. Uh, and kicks the guards as it goes. I'm going to play this one more time so you can see it. And not only can you see it, but you can hear it, which is another new feature in Shake 3. You can now import audio. You can scrub audio. You can play back audio. And even in your curve editor, when you're doing animations, you can view the audio waveforms. And if you need to slip it just to align things better, you can just slip the audio around and then scrub through it and see that it matches up with your animation. So it's very easy now to work with uh, not only previewing on a broadcast monitor, but also listening to sound while you're creating visual effects. OK, so let's break this scene down and, and show you how they actually created it, because that's the fun part. So first of all, it looks like a pretty easy scene. You have these guards, and you have Wolverine in there. But if we use the compare buffer just to compare it, the character is actually 3D of Wolverine. It's a completely 3D character uh, put against live action. Now, the difference between the 3D character and the, and the character in the um, the final composite is that we had to composite the hair and the face on them to make them look much more realistic. Okay, so how did we do that? Well, if we go back up to our tree in the beginning here, we can see we're going to go to a 4K plate, and you can see it's much larger, so we'll just resize that. And in this 4K plate, um, what, we, what normally you would have to do is go through rotoscope and frame by frame, you know, adjust the roto shape so it cuts out just his head. Um, using new feature in Shake. Three is the ability now to track that data, but then apply that tracking data to any of your paint strokes or roto shapes. So here we have the tracking data as his head goes down. And then we'll just isolate the head using a roto shape. And let's zoom in so you can see that. So here's our roto shape. And now as we click down, all we have to do is choose from the menu, attach tracker to shape. And once we do that, you'll see the roto shape actually moves as his head moves. So it's very easy now to bypass a lot of the manual keyframing that might take hours to do. You can always go back and, and tweak it if you need to. But this gets you so much further ahead so much quicker. OK, once we, once we have the head isolated, we can just use some of our compositing tools to composite that onto uh, the body. And there we have now uh, Wolverine's face over the 3D body. Over on this other part of the tree, we have our character of um, Mystique, not Mystere. And then you can see Mystique kind of jumping through. And we just mix those two together and place them over uh, for another 4K background. Again, full film res images, different resolutions, 4K and 2K. And then down on the bottom, we just put, place in Mystere, and we place in some shadows on the background there on the floor. And that's how we can complete this shot. But once we're done now, now we want to output it. And to output a full four, a mixed a film resolution image with 2K and 4K images, 32-bit, on a local system, it's going to take probably about an hour just for these two seconds. Okay, but there are two trends I'm sure we're all aware of that are happening in visual effects. One is they're getting a lot more complex. You're going to have a lot more layers, more and more layers from 3D being mixed with live action. So the visual effects themselves are becoming a lot more complicated. And number two, if you're watching any kind of TV, commercials, music videos, or film, you're noticing that a lot more visual effects are being done. So more shots are actually going through the visual effects stage. So if you're going to be limited by one workstation, you're going to really slow down. So how do you get the workflow through? How do you get that pipeline really moving fast? Well, one way is new in Shake 3, you have unlimited distributed rendering. So you can use all of your rendering licenses on a rack of Xserves and render it. I'm going to show you how that works right now. I'm going to go into the terminal, and I'm going to type C slash. No, I'm not going to do that. Right? I'm going to use Shake QMaster. It's the easiest way to do uh, distributed rendering. So right now, automatically in our administrator window, in the bottom half down here, it's using Rendezvous to detect that rack of Xserves over there automatically. I don't know the IP addresses. I don't know the names. I don't know any of that. It's just automatically detecting them as available resources that I can use to render. So if I want to just choose a few uh, Xserves to render, I just drag them into my cluster window. Right? So now I've just made a cluster. I've let two, left two servers down the bottom available for someone else to come up and render on them. But now I can render on these. I can open up the Shake window, the Shake project window here. 
open up my window and say, okay, great, I can pick the start and end frames that I want to render, I can choose if I want to render proxies, I can choose motion blur, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very powerful, very easy way to take advantage of all the resources that you have available to you in your facility. Okay, so we're pretty excited with all these new features to see what not only our uh, film customers can do, but now what uh, commercial post-visual effects artists can do as well. And we certainly want to congratulate Weta Digital on winning the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects for Lord of the Rings this year. And uh, I'm sure we'll see. Uh, they used Shake as the primary tool to, uh, in Lord of the Rings. I'm sure we'll see a lot of good things from them in the future, too. Thanks, Dion. Now, if you didn't catch it, this, there's a, we have a, a small rack of just four X-Serves and an X-Serve rate over there. The fastest, cheapest, easiest way to set up your own uh, cluster for rendering projects. And, and um, this QMaster technology is pretty, pretty powerful. And one of the things we'll be doing with it is we're working with some others that also have command line rendering products like Maya so that they can support network rendering over this QMaster software so other products can also be managed in one easy interface and an easy way to do that. So we've got some good work going on with some other partners as well. So, Shake 3 is absolutely the most powerful tool for motion graphics. New version will be available in June. And here the pricing is very interesting. Uh, for Linux and IRIX products, the pricing stays as it was before, no change. The GUI product is a $9,900 product. The renderer server backend is $3,900 per, per server. And of course, there's maintenance program and pricing that those customers know really well. On the Mac, we're making it for the new version, $49.50, and that includes unlimited Mac-based server rendering in your network. So if somebody wants to get into the GUI on the Mac and also get the renderers going, yeah. So continuing to support our Linux customers in this, as, as we said we would, but also making a really good deal on the Mac. Nothing wrong with that. So that's, that's Shake 3. So those are our three new products that we wanted to allow you to be the first to see and the first to get to know. That's Final Cut Pro 4, DVD Studio Pro 2, and Shake 3. I think these, these three products, like everything we've been working on, I hope demonstrate to you that, as Tim pointed out, we are investing a tremendous, tremendous amount in engineering products that aren't just as good as whatever's come before it on those expensive proprietary solutions but things that break new grounds, new territory, and enable and really innovative new uses on a desktop or notebook computer of technology that was unheard of before. Just incredible technology, and, and the things you'll do with it, I'm sure, will be amazing.